This is a video solution for the guessing game task. This task asks us to write a class to model a guessing game, and we're given an informal specification for this class. The first thing we're going to need to do is to create a class named guessing game. And let's open the editor for this class. The specification we're given lists five ways of interacting with a guessing game, and these are going to become the methods of the class. So those are getting the number of guesses remaining, seeing whether the game is over, seeing whether the game has been won, making a guess, and printing the correct number. We're going to need some more details than those, but we can start by just writing the signatures of the methods that this class is going to need. So if I want to get the number of guesses remaining, then I don't need to give any parameters for this method. I should just be able to receive that number without me providing any extra information. And that number will be an int. So the signature of this method should be int get guesses remaining and no parameters. And I'll leave this method with an empty body for now. We're just getting the signatures of these methods correct to start off with. And then once we've got the signatures correct, we can think about how to make those methods work. The second method is to see whether or not the game is over. Well, that's a true or false condition, so the return type of this method will be boolean. And we can see uh, whether the game is over. So a good name for this method would be is over. And generally, when you have a simple boolean method like this, its name should begin with something like is or has. We want to see whether or not the game has been won. So this again is a Boolean true or false question. So it's going to return a Boolean. And we can call this method is one. And I'm just going to leave these methods empty again. We'll write the body bodies later. For now, we just want to get the signatures of the methods correct. We want to be able to make a guess. And let's understand what this method is supposed to do. Well, it will reduce the number of guesses remaining by one. It should print whether the guess is correct or too high or too low. It should also update any other fields as appropriate. So we might need fields to keep track of whether the game is over or has been won or not. And there's another rule which says a guess can only be made if the game is not over. Now there's nothing in here that suggests this needs to return a result. There is going to be some output from this method, but it's this word prints here, which tells me that the method needs to print something. So I don't need to return anything if I can print my output. So this method will be void, and we'll call it make guess. And this time the method does need a parameter, because when I make a guess, I need to tell the game what number I'm guessing. So I'm going to call this int guess. And that's an int because I'm guessing a whole number. There's one more method here, which is to print the correct number. And again, because the output of this method is going to be printed rather than returned, this method doesn't need to return anything, so we can declare it as a return type void. This method should be called something like print correct number. And this doesn't need any parameters because we're not uh, giving any extra information when we ask for the correct number to be printed. So these are the stubs for the methods we're going to write. And we can get some more um, details filled in before we start thinking about how these methods are going to work, because these are the ways of interacting with a guessing game object. So they should be usable by other classes. So it's a good idea for us to declare that this class and all of its methods, at least the methods uh, that we've specified, should be public. OK. So now what we need to do is make these methods do the right thing. And we don't know what fields we're going to work with yet, but because we're following this process where we start with the ways of interacting with the object, and then the fields are only there to make those methods work, any time I realize I'm going to need another field, any time I realize I'm going to need to keep track of something or remember some information, then I'm just going to pretend that field exists and write it later. So for example, when I'm getting the number of guesses remaining, the obvious thing to do here would be to imagine that I have a field called guesses remaining and just return that field. That's the sensible thing for this method to do. And I can actually do the same for the is over and is one methods. I can expect this guessing game object to keep track of whether the game is over and whether the game has been won. So I'm just going to return variables like over and one, and those will be fields. 
Now, of course, I'm going to get errors. It's going to say, cannot find simple variable, variable guesses remaining, cannot find symbol variable over, and this one will say cannot find symbol variable one. That's because we haven't declared those fields yet. So let's declare them now. My guesses remaining is going to be an int. My over is going to be a boolean. And my one is also going to be a boolean. And because these fields are only there to make the methods work, anyone using one of my guessing game objects should only be able to interact with the object by calling one of these five methods. Therefore, these fields should be private. They should not be available or accessible to someone using this class. It would also be a good idea for me to have a constructor here so that there is a way of creating a guessing game. And for now, I'm just going to leave this constructor blank. And I might put a comment like to do here to say I need to fill this in later. So we want to be able to make a guess. This is the fourth method we've specified. This should reduce the number of guesses remaining by one. So the obvious thing for me to do here would be guesses remaining minus minus. That will reduce the number of guesses by one. And it should print whether the guess is correct, too high, or too low. So there's three different things I might be printing here. It might be correct, too high, or too low. And any time I need a method that does something different in different situations, then I'm going to need an if statement. And because there are three cases for this, I'm going to need one else if and one else. So now my three branches of this if else if else will account for the three different things I'm going to need to print. So let's get the conditions right here. If the guess is correct, then we want to print that it's correct. So if the number I'm guessing is equal to the correct number, and that means I'm going to need to know what the correct number is, this guessing game object is going to need to remember the correct number. So let's make it a field. In that case, we're going to print correct. Otherwise, if the guess is too high, if the guess is larger than the correct number, we're going to want to print that it's too high. And otherwise, the guess will be too low. So we've subtracted one of the guesses remaining. We've printed whether the answer is correct, too high, or too low. What else does this method need to do? We need to update any other fields as appropriate because we've decided that we're going to have a field named over which keeps track of whether the game is over. Then we're going to need to update that field if the game has become over. So after I've reduced my number of guesses by one, we should check if there are any guesses left. And if there aren't any, if this number of guesses remaining is zero, then the game should be over. So we're going to set over to true. And also, if they guess the correct number, the game should also be over as a result of that, because they've guessed the correct number. That's the end of the game. But also, they've won. So we're going to set 1 equals true here as well. And there's one more detail about what this method needs to do, which is that a guess can only be made if the game is not over. So before we allow them to make a guess, I need to wrap the whole of this in a big if statement to say if the game is not over then they're allowed to make this guess now we could do something here like else print the game is over the specification doesn't say we need to do that and um, so it's okay to do that it's okay to not do it as long as we've implemented all of the behavior in the specification then this is okay what i'm going to do here just for example is write an else clause here to say you cannot guess the game is over. And this isn't required by the specification, but it's a sensible thing for the method to do. So I've chosen that my method will do that. Now, of course, I've got this error here, which says cannot find symbol variable correct number. 
And the reason for that is I just imagined that I had a field that held the correct number that needed to be guessed, because that was the obvious way to make this method work. I need to compare the guess with what the correct number is, so I need to know what the correct number is. Therefore, let's just assume I have a field that holds this. And now let's, let's make that assumption true. Let's create a field for the correct number. And I'm going to declare this here, private int correct number. And now this error will go away because we've declared this field. And there's one more thing that our specification says. We have a method to print the correct number. So what we need to do is print the correct number. So I'm going to write system.out.println. The correct number is, and then here's the correct number. But we should only do this if the game is over. So I should wrap this in an if statement. If the game is over, then we can print the correct number. So again, that's all that's specified for this method. I don't need to do anything else here. I could have an else block that says print the game is not over, so I'm not going to tell you the correct number. That's not required by the specification, so it's OK to have it. It's OK to not have it. The specification doesn't say whether I should do that or not. So just for example, I'm going to write it, but this isn't required by the specification. The game is not over yet, so I'm not going to print the correct number. So now I've implemented all five of these methods. There are a few more details about the specification, though. So one of those details is that the player has 10 guesses to guess correctly. So from the start of the game, the number of guesses that they have should be 10. So what I can do is set this in the constructor. When the game starts, they will have 10 guesses remaining. We also need to set the correct number somehow. And this specification doesn't tell me anything about where that correct number comes from. So how is it decided? Maybe it's chosen randomly. Maybe it's chosen by the other player. That's not part of the specification. So any way of getting this number is OK. What I'm going to do is take it as a parameter to the constructor and say this dot correct number equals correct number. And this way, I can choose how to get this correct number if I'm using this model in a real program. That correct number could come from the keyboard, or it could come from a random number generator or somewhere else. But because I'm taking it into the constructor, then it's someone else's or some other class's responsibility to generate that number and pass it into the constructor. So if you generated this randomly or, or got it from some other way, then that's OK, because the specification doesn't say where that number should come from. But the simplest thing to do is take it as a parameter to this constructor. Now, there's two other fields here which I should probably initialize. Um, just to be clear, I should say that over is false. The game is not over yet when you've just started, and you haven't won yet when the game has just started. Now, technically, I don't need to do that because these are Boolean fields. And if I don't initialize them, then they will have a default value of false. So it's not strictly necessary for me to write this, but I think it's clearer to sp explicitly give these fields the value false so we know that we intend them to be false when the game starts. So I'm going to click Compile on this class, and I expect to see no syntax errors. In this case, I do see no syntax errors. So I'm going to close this and do some quick testing. I'm going to create a guessing game object. And because my constructor takes one parameter for the correct number, Let's say it's 67. So I can see the number of guesses remaining. That should be 10. I can see if the game is over. That should be false. The game is not over yet. I can see if I've won. And that should also be false. I've not won yet. And if I ask to see the correct number, I should not see that yet. It should say the game is not over yet. So that's what I do see. So let's continue testing this. I'm going to make a guess. And when I make a guess, I need to choose what number I'm guessing. So let's start by guessing 50. And that says too low. So let's make another guess and try guessing 75. And that's too high. And at this point, I should have eight guesses remaining. So I can test that. The game should still not be over. So game dot is over should be false and game dot is one should still be false. And now if I guess the correct number of 67, it should tell me correct. 
and now game dot is over should be true and game dot is one should be true as well because we guessed the correct number and now if i ask to see the correct number because the game is over this should be allowed so it will tell me the correct number is 67. so now that i've tested this class i'm confident that it's working correctly if i was going to be more thorough in testing this class i would want to test the case where i made 10 incorrect guesses to make sure that the game would be over and then that once the game was over i wouldn't be able to make more guesses um, but i'm not going to worry about that now because this video is just an example and the main task here was writing the game so I'll, I'll just say a few more things about writing this game because the task here is to write a class modeling a guessing game we're just writing a model we're not writing a complete program here so there's no loop there's no reading from the keyboard and um, i can't play this as if it's a program if i wanted to turn this into a program i would need another class maybe guessing game program that created a guessing game object read from the keyboard had a loop to l allow me to keep guessing and uh, in that case I would have a full program but here I only want to write a model so this model should just behave the way that the guessing game is supposed to behave and therefore there's nothing to do with keyboard input here there's no loop that makes you make 10 guesses in a row all of this is just according to the specification so if you did have any of those extra details like a loop that made the player guess 10 times then actually that's incorrect in this task because the model doesn't have a way of interacting with it that says make 10 guesses there's a method to make a guess that's something you can do but if you want to make 10 guesses then you should call the make guess method 10 times okay we'll end the video here in the next video we'll take a look at a sample solution for the tamagotchi task